Uh, what I like to do is tell true stories from my life. This is one of them, and I call it the moth and the window. In the mid-1970s, I came out to Los Angeles to become an actor. It only took me three years before I realized it was impossible. I couldn't get a job, I couldn't get an agent, I couldn't even work for free. I performed on one show where I had to pay the producer $100 to cast me. <laughs> it was not money well spent. Opening night, no one was in the audience. But the bright spot was I was able to meet other struggling actors, and one of them was someone named Tom Calloway, and he was friends with Pat Riley, the new coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers made it to the playoff that year, led by someone named Magic Johnson, and there was Kareem and James Worthy. It was showtime, and we had tickets on the 10th row. I was in heaven. My car was a dented Oldsmobile that was on its last legs. It had no heater, no windshield wipers. The front window was of the hand crank variety and it was permanently in the down position. <laughs> Not completely down. Uh, there was about one inch of window sticking up from the bottom, but it was hardly protection from the elements. The only thing I had to keep me warm was the rock and roll on the radio. It was freezing that night on the way to the arena. I switched the radio from Shake It Up by the Cars to the game. It was about 15 minutes before the tip-off. I pulled behind a long line of cars headed into the parking area, and that's when I noticed I was not alone. There was a big moth in the car. It began fluttering around my face, and I swatted at it, trying to encourage it to fly out of the permanently open front window. <laughs> but it only flew into the part of the window that was closed on the bottom, <laughs> the bottom inch, and then it flew right back into my face. I spoke to the moth with quiet authority. I said, go on, go on, get, get out of here. Now it was 10 minutes before tip off, but the line of cars hadn't budged. I stuck my head out the window and yelled, let's go, come on. I honked once, I sat back in my seat, I was steaming. The moth fluttered around my head again. Again, I tried to knock it out of the window, and again, it kept banging against that bottom inch that was standing up, and he did it again and again and again, and I muttered, stupid, idiotic moth, what a moron. <laughs> On the radio, they started introducing the players. Now I was in a panic. There had to be some sort of problem up ahead. Maybe someone didn't have change. Maybe the parking lot was full. I started honking my horn and yelling, come on, come on, move it. The moth tried to fly up my nose. I yelled, look moth, you have the entire window. It's completely open, go or I will kill you. I've often talked tough to insects. The game started, I screamed. I finally got out of my car to see what the holdup was, and then I saw, to my horror, I had been waiting in a line of parked cars. <laughs> I had been honking and yelling at no one. Upon further examination, there wasn't even a gate up ahead of me. The entrance to the arena was only a product of my own wishful thinking. Inside the car, I saw the moth fly into the window once again, and then it hit me in that one moment. We were exactly the same. <laughs> the moth and me. He couldn't see the open window. I couldn't see that I was behind a line of parked cars. It was all a matter of perspective. Since then, I've had many walls thrown at me in life, hardships, setbacks. But because of my friend, the moth, I learned that sometimes a wall is not a wall, but from a different angle, it could be a bridge. That's the way the world teaches us to see with new eyes.